I keep a few different types of fish in my ponds. In this video I want to talk a little bit about each of them, why I keep them and what fish I think is the best for the average pond hobbyist. Keep in mind these are just my personal choices. The fish available vary all over the world. I live in southeastern Australia. To give you an idea of the type of climate my plant growing zone is classed as zone 9b. So if you are a pond owner and know of better fish for where you live, please leave a comment and tell the rest of the viewers why they're better and what part of the world you're from. That way we can all help each other. G'day, my name is Kev. The aim of my channel is to help people build and maintain ponds without spending a fortune. If that sounds like something that interests you, please subscribe and check out my website, ozponds.com. Okay, so the first type of fish I like to keep are native fish. I keep Murray River rainbows, southern pygmy perch, southern purple spotted gudgeons and silver perch. I really like keeping native fish as it feels like an environmentally wise decision. The funny thing is that three of those fish aren't actually local to my catchment area. So even though they're native to my particular state, they aren't found in the local river systems of my area. Even so, I like the fact that they're at least Aussie. I would like to keep galaxias and maybe blackfish. Those are found locally in my rivers, but there is nowhere to buy these and I'm a terrible fisherman. I wish there were more fish breeders that offered these types of fish. But I guess it's a supply and demand thing and the demand just mustn't be there. If anyone knows of suppliers that sell them, please leave a link and comment in the description to help anyone else that's looking for them. Now, one of the problems with most of these native fish that I keep, apart from the rainbows, most of them are incredibly shy and they're not really very colorful, which can be annoying because even if the pond has lots of fish, you rarely ever see them. They are predominantly carnivores, which means that they won't help you out by grazing on algae within the pond. Again, it's the rainbows that are pretty good. They'll eat a bit of algae, but because they're quite small, they don't really make a big dent. Some of the bigger natives like silver perch, bass and Murray cod can be quite fun to feed as they strike really quickly and that's fun to watch. So I think natives are a cool choice for anyone that's environmentally minded. If you want fish that are colourful and you can see when you peer down into the pond, there are better choices. The next fish species that I keep are white cloud mountain minnows. These are a small fish that are native to China. And although they come from a subtropical environment, they do quite well in lots of outdoor ponds. The air temperatures where I live can get as low as minus five degrees Celsius at night. That's during the winter, but more commonly it's around zero or a couple of degrees. My ponds never freeze over. These fish do look their best from side on, but even so I get a lot of enjoyment out of them as they like to school together in large groups and hang out at the surface of the pond. These are omnivores which means they'll graze a bit on algae and they do devour mosquito larvae. These fish are incredibly hardy and a really good choice for beginner fish keepers and those with small ponds. I keep mine in a few wine barrel and container ponds. They will breed easily as long as there is enough food and hiding areas for the fry. They're a good choice for small patio ponds and water gardens where you just want something small that will help control mosquitoes. But if you want something that's still small and it's bright and colorful, the Japanese rice fish is your best bet. These little fish are native to East Asia and are often found in rice fields and slow moving shallow bodies of water. These are another incredibly hardy fish that's great for beginners. Their preferred food of choice is mosquito larvae and small plankton although they'll also take tiny floating pellets. These fish have been kept and bred in Japan since at least the 17th century. Centuries of selective breeding have created quite an extensive range of colors that are available today. 
Like the mountain minnows, they like to school, hang out by the surface of the pond and breed easily. I had lots of fun during the summer months collecting the eggs and growing up the fry. I did try and keep them in my courtyard pond, which has southern pygmy perch and goldfish. <laughs> Weird combination, I know. Initially, the courtyard pond was meant just for natives, but then I built the larger pond that I call my dream pond and put all my natives up there. We like to sit by the courtyard pond the most. It's visible from the kitchen and dining windows of the house. So we decided to turn it into a more colorful pond with goldfish and rice fish. However, the rice fish kept disappearing. So I moved the survivors out into the wine barrels and other container ponds so they could be safe. I still don't know whether it was the goldfish or the southern pygmy perch who were eating them, but they're safe now and thriving. Oh, and I do keep some white clouds in a pond with these as well. Um, so keeping them together is okay. So now we have the goldfish. Where I live, koi are illegal. So goldfish are the largest colorful fish that I can keep. I also think that goldfish are the best pond fish for the average pond owner to keep. They're another hardy fish that can withstand wide fluctuations in temperature. I mean, they're kept all over the world, all the way from the equator to freezing places like Canada. They are colourful and large enough that you can see them from a distance. And they're just awesome omnivores. They just seem to constantly forage for food. They just don't stop. This is awesome as they'll constantly nibble away at algae. And because they're bigger than some of the smaller omnivores, they can actually get it under control. They'll also eat mosquito larvae. They most commonly grow to about six inches, but they can potentially reach a foot in length. Contrast that with koi, which I also think are pretty awesome and I wish I could keep them but they're commonly around 20 to 25 inches in length, but can max out at four foot. That's a big fish. And the bigger the fish, the more filtration that's needed to maintain clean, clear, healthy water. Goldfish like to school together and follow each other around. They're also incredibly interactive and will pretty much beg for food anytime you come close to the pond. So because they're so easy to care for, colourful, eat algae and are super interactive, I think that they're the best choice for the average pond owner. And best of all, they're usually super cheap and easy to come by no matter where you live. Whatever fish you like to keep, never release them into the wild. Like I mentioned at the start, even some of the native fish that I keep aren't actually native to my catchment area. I like to think us pond owners keep ponds because we love nature. There are plenty of people that will take in unwanted fish for free, so just do the right thing. I hope this video has been helpful. I'm by no means a fish expert. These are just the types of fish that I have found I enjoy keeping in my ponds. Like I said, if you have other fish you like to keep that do well in your area of the world, let us all know down in the comments so we can all discover new and exciting species that do well in the ponds. Thanks for watching. See ya.